Hey friends, welcome to this session of Healing Talks. I'm Chad Gonzalez. Man, I'm so excited to be with you tonight, spend a little time with you. Hey, I want to show you uh, something really exciting. I love this. I love this. When I get to see new pictures, we've got brand new partner pictures in. And we've been asking you all for about a month now. If you're a monthly partner with us, please send us your picture. We've got a partner wall here in our offices that we've been creating. Just so every time we walk by, we can see all of our our partner smiling faces your beautiful faces and uh, as we pray for you daily and thank god for you daily i've told you that one of the things i pray for you is ephesians chapter 1 15 through 21 is the prayer that paul prayed for the church I, I pray this for myself pray this for my family and i pray this for you as well but look look at these see if you see yourself if you see yourself in there uh comment in the uh in the chat if you're watching my facebook or youtube Speaking of YouTube, if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure and subscribe there. Click that bell. Hit the subscribe link there so you don't miss out on anything. Do you see yourself? We've got a bunch of these, man. This is so awesome. There's the Bartels there. Do you see your picture? Have I gone through them all yet? I think I might have. I love these. And so, hey, you want your picture? It doesn't have to be anything fancy. It doesn't have to be like glamour shots. Remember... Remember Glamour Shots? What was that back in like the 90s or something like that? Just take your cell phone, take a picture of yourself. Hey, there's me. Oh, yeah, this is California. And uh, take a picture of yourself and send it on in. We'd love to have your picture and put there on the partner wall. So, so very excited to see all of these wonderful faces there. Oh, here's the beginning. There you go. There's that one. There's that one right there. Praise God. So send us your picture. We want your picture so we can put it on our wall. Hey, uh, if you have your Bible, grab your Bible. And I want to look at something in regards to our imaginations and our faith. This is something that is not talked about. Um, we need to spend a lot more time talking about this. Romans chapter 5. Paul's talking about Abraham. Now, you've probably heard Romans chapter 5 and verse 17 that says, As is written, I've made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things that be not as though they are. Have you ever heard that before? Well, in the context of this, notice what he says. Who, verse 18, who contrary to hope and hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Now look, notice verse 19 through 21. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body, already dead since he was about 100 years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He didn't waver the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Look at verse 19. And not being weak in faith, he didn't consider his own body. See, friends, your faith and your considerations are directly tied together. Now, I understand that you and I, faith is a spiritual thing. You and I, we are faith children of a faith God. We are spirits. We have a soul, our mind, our will, emotions, and we live in a body. But you cannot be in faith with doubt in your in your head. You cannot be in faith with considerations of doubt and unbelief in your thoughts and your imaginations. No, it's absolutely impossible. This is why you and I, we are to cast down those thoughts, cast down those imaginations, those things that exalt themselves against the knowledge of Christ. We have to treat our thoughts like an enemy. We have to treat our thoughts like a captive. That those thoughts of doubt, unbelief, of the curse, when they come, we grab them and we take them, we imprison them, and we lock, lock the door and we throw away the key. We choose not to think on those things. Why? Because my considerations will affect my faith. You see, I'm not trying to get more faith. Yes, I said it. I'm not trying to get more faith. Why? I've got the faith of God. 
I'm not trying to get more love. I've got the love of God. See, friends, if you have the love of God, which we have no problem saying that, I've got the love of God shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. We have no problem saying I've got the peace of God. We have no problem saying I've got the joy of the Lord. We have no problem saying I've got the patience of God. We have no problem saying that, that I have the perseverance of God, the, the self-control of God. But then faith? Yeah, you got the faith of God too. Friend, how can you do the same works of Jesus without the same equipment? Can't do it. In order to do the same works of Jesus, you have to have the same faith. Your faith is not the issue. Your considerations are the issue. I've got the faith of God. My faith, your faith, it works all the time. You see, our faith is producing what we are considering. What are your considerations? That's what your faith is producing. What are your imaginations? That's what your faith is producing. Whatever has your imaginations has your faith. Notice what it says about Abraham. He wasn't weak in faith because he wasn't considering his body. It wasn't because he wasn't reading the Bible enough. See, it's been said, well, if you, if you need more faith, well, you need to hear, 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 hear more of the word. Because faith comes by hearing and 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 hearing. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. Yeah, but see, we added all the hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. See, when I hear the word, I've got faith for that thing. But what I spend my time, my considerations on, that's going to determine what my faith produces. Certainly, I need to be aware of what I have. But the moment I become aware of it, faith is there and faith will produce it. But the Bible says that Abraham, he wasn't weak in faith because he wasn't considering his body. In other words, your faith being strong or weak in the area is going to be determined by what you are considering. What are you considering? So, you know, you can't be you can't be strong in faith if you're considering the doctor report all the time. You can't be strong in faith if you're considering the growth on your body all the time. You can't be strong in faith if you're considering the pain in your body all the time. Look, I get it. If there's pain, there's hurts, there's things going on. I get it. When your body is screaming at you, I get it. I understand. I understand. It's a legitimate thing because I've had people ask me, okay, well, what do you do when your body's screaming at you? You got to make a choice. I'm not going to consider it. And I've been in situations. My body was screaming at me. It's hard, but you can do it. Why? Because we are spirit beings. And we tell our body what to do, how to feel. I, I get it. I understand. There's times we can be weaker, or we can be stronger. And it ultimately comes down to what have I been considering? What have I, what have I been allowing myself to consider and think about? Let me tell you this. You can get to the point. And I've actually had this happen. I've had this happen actually recently. You can get to the point where you think about this enough. This becomes so much a part of you. That even in your dreams, even in, if you want to say, an unconscious state or a semi-conscious state, that this becomes so much a part of you that it comes out of you. There was there was a situation that happened just uh, was it about a week ago, I guess. And... Uh, you know, those times when you're kind of awake, but you're not awake, you know, and I woke up and, or I was, I was waking up. I woke up because like my, uh, my, my stomach was just like in pain. And, uh, first time I'd had anything like, like that happen in a long time, stomach was in pain. And like, it was kind of like a dream. I was having this dream. And in my dream, I'm, I'm, I'm confessing and quoting the word from the standpoint of the life of God flows in me. I am dead to sin. I'm dead to sickness, dead to disease. It's impossible for these things to touch me and stay. 
like in my dream, I was saying those things. And then, you know, when you wake up, you're kind of half awake, not awake. And in that moment, I was still saying those things, saying those things. And, uh, and then I kind of woke up and realized what was going on and continued kind of saying those things in, in, in my meditations for, for a few moments. And all of a sudden that pain went away. I don't know what was going on there, but it was interesting to me. I was thinking about that later on through the day. In my dream, I was responding. Now, look, I wasn't just quoting scriptures. I'm talking about declaring who I am. The focus was not on trying to get healed. The focus was who I am, declaring who I am, seeing from who I am. That was happening in my sleep. And it carried out into that kind of semi conscious, awake, awareness state. Friend, I'm telling you, we, we can get to a point. This just becomes a part of you. And that's where a lot of us miss it, is that we're, when it comes to our declarations, confessions, we're saying it from, from just a rote mechanical place. No, 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 no. We need to go beyond that where it becomes a part of us. See, Jesus said this. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That word heart there in the Greek is literally your soul. It's not talking about you as a, as a spirit. It's talking about your soul. From your soul, whatever you think on the most, that's what you're going to speak on. See, when you get pressed, when you get squeezed, whatever you have soaked up, that's what's going to come out. And this is where you and I, we have to be very vigilant. And I mean like a soldier preparing for war. We have to be vigilant and intentional every single day throughout the day. We are meditating on the word day and night. We're meditating on the word day and night so we know what to do. We're meditating on the word day and night so that when the trials of life happen, when things come against us, it's automatically the word that comes forth. And not just scriptures. I'm telling you him that he comes forth. The person behind the word comes forth out of the abundance of, of my imaginations, the abundance of my considerations. Life comes forth. I'm not trying to think of anything. It just comes out of me because it's who I am. You see, you don't have to teach a dog to bark. Well, you don't have to teach a believer to believe. And we shouldn't be in a place where we're having to mechanically work things up no look your considerations he wasn't weak in faith because he wasn't considering his own body friend what are you considering are you considering what's going on in the world are you considering what you're seeing on the news are you considering what you googled as far as symptoms don't do that don't google your symptoms because i guarantee you i mean i guarantee you after you google your symptoms you're going to remember your symptoms that Google tells you about. And every time after you Googled your symptoms, every time you have a little pain, you have a little squeak, you have a little this, I have a little that, all of a sudden, there's that little Google demon. It's going to be there to remind you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember? Remember what you Googled? Remember what you saw? Yep, 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 yep. That's it. That's it. That's it. Don't do that. If you want to Google something, Google the word. Don't be going and Googling symptoms. Instead of Googling symptoms, go look up identif identification. Go look up who you are and meditate on that. You don't need to meditate on what the, what the world's saying is normal. No, no, no. What has your considerations? What has your considerations? Whatever has your considerations has your faith. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. The mouth will speak. It's all through here. And I'll give you this one, last one here, Mark chapter 11. This is interesting. Ever read Mark chapter 11? Let me show you something here. Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus said, have faith in God. Or have the faith of God. 
For surely I say to you, whoever says this mountain, be thou removed, be cast into the sea, and doesn't doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you will have them. See, you can't have faith in your heart and doubt in your head. Why? Because whatever has your soul has your faith. He said, does not doubt in his heart. Well, that word heart there, again, in the Greek, is talking about your soul. Be removed and be cast into the sea. And doesn't doubt in his soul. You could say, doesn't doubt in his, his thoughts and imaginations. But believes that those things he says will be done, he'll have whatever he says. See, you can't be in faith with doubt in your head. It doesn't work like that. Friend, you have to understand the Bible tells us in Hebrews that the spirit and soul of man are so, so intertwined and divinely connected that the only thing that can truly separate it is the word of God. You as a spirit being and your imaginations, your considerations, your thoughts, your meditations, they affect each other. They're connected. And so... We've got to be very intentional and very vigilant on what we spend our time meditating on, thinking about. And so this is why I encourage you. This is why I spend so much time meditating and thinking about these new creation realities, who I am in Christ, my identification with him, looking at him to tell me who I am. So that if something ever even tried to come against me, I'm not trying to work something up, who he, who I am in him immediately comes out and that stays my meditation so that even in my sleep even in my dreams i'm responding the right way and that he comes out of me even when i'm dreaming why because me as a spirit being i don't go to sleep still still working and still resting in him by the grace of god anyway real simple there but just wanted to give you that whatever has your considerations has your faith. You want to be strong in faith? Then let your considerations be on who you are in Him. Why is that? Because you can't look to this to tell you who you are as a spirit. You can't look to your body to tell you what you have as a spirit being. You can't look to your body to tell you who you are in Christ. You have to look to Him to tell you who you are and what you have. So, what are you considering? Whatever you're considering, that's what your faith is going to produce. Praise God. Well, trust that helped you. That helped me. Got me thinking about some things and things I think we might talk about next week. So anyway, hey, if you're a partner with us, thank you so very much. Uh, we cannot do what we do without you. And actually, because of your partnership, we're going to be heading down to Bogota. And like I told you, all of our all of our meetings, not just uh, international, but domestic too, we cover all of the expenses and we're able to do that because of our partners. And so I just thank you so very much. We've got so many other projects that are coming up, other book translations. Uh, we've got some great projects for 2024 we're going to be working on, including uh, kids' resources, media. We're going to have a social media channel, uh, different social media channels just for kids and, and teenagers. We've got some great, great stuff. I'm so excited about we're going to be uh, in the works of, of producing, getting ready for. Uh, but more book translations, uh, lots of other projects like that. So again, thank you to all of our partners. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure and do that. Uh, download our app. It's free and we've been seeing a lot of you uh, grab a hold of that. There's some great features in there. Uh, good stuff. And we're so thankful that you are on the journey with us. God bless you, my friend. Remember Christ, we always win. We'll see you next week.